His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, received at Sakhir Palace the beauty of Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa in the presence of the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander, Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Guard Special Force Commander, Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and His Highness Colonel Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. During the meeting, His Majesty was briefed on the future plans to develop all weaponry and units of the BDF. His Majesty expressed appreciation and pride in all the BDF members for their unwavering commitment to fulfilling their duties with sincerity, contributing to the security of the nation and its citizens and the stability of the region. His Majesty highlighted their dedication to national duties, which have been demonstrated in numerous tasks entrusted to them. His Majesty also praised the regional and international sports achievements of the BDF and noted that these accomplishments are part of the Kingdom's various sports achievements within the framework of the comprehensive development process in all domains. His his Majesty instructed the senior officers to convey his greetings to all members of the BDF at their various positions within the Kingdom and abroad. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Libya Palace. The cabinet highlighted the importance of the meeting between His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the UK Prime Minister the Right Honourable Sir Keir Starmer. The cabinet noted the role of the meeting in consolidating bilateral relations and bolstering cooperation. The cabinet then followed up on implementing His Royal Highness's directives to hold an induction day for parents and guardians across public schools for the new academic year. In this regard, the cabinet wished students, teachers and administrators a successful new academic year. The cabinet thanked the companies, institutions and shops that offered promotions on school supplies, which is part of the private sector's contributions to society. The cabinet followed up on the preparations made by the Ministry of Interior to manage traffic flow around educational areas and ensure safe transportation for students, parents and educational staff. The cabinet also stressed the importance of the Ministry of Works road development projects completed ahead of the school year, which will improve traffic conditions. The cabinet then congratulated the winners of the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the use of ICT in education, highlighting the importance of this award in advancing educational projects globally and supporting UNESCO's efforts in this area. To mark the upcoming International Day of Charity, the cabinet affirmed Bahrain's commitment to adopt initiatives that enhance charitable work in society. The cabinet then approved the following. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Social Services on the outcomes of the implementation of the midday outdoor work ban during July and August. The cabinet commended the company's commitment to the decision while directing the extension of the midday outdoor work ban period for three months beginning in 2025. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft law approving the Kingdom's membership to the Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties of 1969. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft law ratifying the framework agreement along with the agency of guarantee agreements between the government of Bahrain and the Islamic Development Bank. These agreements facilitate the financing for the construction of the new 400 kV in Jasra station. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft law ratifying the agreement between the government of Bahrain and the government of Hungary to encourage and exchange investment protection. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a resolution to issue the executive regulations of a decree law on the transfer of transplantation of human organs. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture on the acquisition of several properties for urban development intended to serve public interest and a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to three proposals and six laws submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Foreign Affairs on the topics included in the draft agenda for the 161st session of the Ministerial Council of the GCC. The Cabinet then took note of the following ministerial reports. The outcomes of the participation in the Tataristan Oil and Gas Conference. The outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the discussion on the two additional protocols to the Convention on the Rights of the Child. The outcomes of the participation in the first conference of the Ad Hoc Group for the implementation of the third point of the Peace Formula Energy Security. 
and the outcomes of attending the launch of the Arab Strategy for Youth, Peace and Security. The Ministry of Industry and Commerce, in partnership with the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the BCCI, held an introductory meeting on the virtual commercial registration Sajilli's latest enhancements. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, highlighted that Sajilli is designed to empower entrepreneurs and small businesses, contributing to economic growth. The minister noted that Sajilli aligns with the government's broader efforts to enhance Bahrain's business climate. He expressed aspiration that the recent updates will make it easier for entrepreneurs and investors to launch and expand their ventures, thereby reinforcing Bahrain's position as a leading destination for investment and business in the region. He underscored the BCCI's role in contributing to the national economic development. The BCCI chairman Samir Nas emphasized the vital role of the private sector as an influential partner in achieving economic diversification and accelerating the pace of commercial and industrial activity in the kingdom. Under the patronage of the first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, the first edition of the Khalid bin Hamid Gold Generation League concluded. The ceremony was attended by GSA Vice Chairman His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, who praised the success of the league, emphasizing that His Highness Sheikh Khalid attaches great importance to all age groups by supporting efforts to discover and refine talents to enhance the achievements of Bahraini sports. His Highness expressed pleasure with the goals achieved by the Khalid bin Hamid Gold Generation League initiative over the past two seasons, noting the results of the handball, volleyball, and basketball teams in their recent forum participation, which were a direct result of the Gold Generation confirmed the success of the strategy to focus on sports achievements. His Highness also praised the interest shown by sports federations and clubs and their keenness to participate in the tournament. For his part, the GSA CEO, Dr. Abdurrahman Asker, praised the international witnessed by the interaction witnessed by the event and hailed its result on Bahraini sports in various local and foreign participations. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning organized an introductory workshop on the regulatory requirements in housing project areas in coordination with the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, based on the approval of the Cabinet of a draft decision to amend the regulatory requirements for construction in housing project areas. The workshop was attended by members of the Municipal Councils and the Capital Secretariat, and a number of members of engineering offices and contracting companies. The Ministry affirmed that these requirements contribute to expanding residential units and addressing a number of recurring building violations that were monitored by the Ministry and relevant authorities. During the workshop, the Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture Ministry Under Secretary Engineer Sheikh Mohammed bin Ahmed Al Khalifa confirmed that the amendments will contribute to facilitating the issuance of building permits according to the requirements and needs of residents which supports facilitating construction work according to their requirements and aspirations. For his part, the CEO of the Urban Planning and Development Authority, Engineer Ahmed Abdelaziz Al Khayyat, affirmed that these requirements come in response to the rapid urban changes and in accordance with the beneficiaries' proposals to increase ways to optimally benefit from built areas. The Ministry of Labor Under Secretary His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa participated in the meeting of the Committee of Under Secretaries of GCC Labor Ministries in Qatar in preparation for the 10th meeting of the Committee of GCC Labor Ministers. The committee approved the agenda of the 10th ministerial meeting and the draft resolutions submitted by the ministers for approval. The Under Secretaries discussed coordinating the work of technical teams and committees on developing joint Gulf action in the field of labor, manpower, and international cooperation, implementing the initiative of the strategy of the Committee of Labor Ministers discussing the GCC General Secretariat's proposal on exchanging expertise between GCC Labor Ministers and allowing the exchange of trainees with specialists and experts in the labor market, in addition to coordinating the GCC position on topics on the agenda of upcoming international and Arab conferences in the field of labor.
The permanent representative of Bahrain to the United Nations office in Vienna, Ambassador Abdullah Abdel Latif Abdullah, presented his credentials as the permanent representative of Bahrain to the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, Rafael Grossi, at the organization's headquarters at the Vienna International Center. The permanent representative to the UN office emphasized the central role of the IAEA in supporting the peaceful use of nuclear technology. He affirmed Bahrain's keenness on the cooperation programs provided by the IAEA within the framework of the country program signed between the kingdom and the agency for the period 2024 to 2029. The director general welcomed the ambassador wishing him success in his new duties and emphasized that he looks forward to further cooperation with Bahrain to achieve the agency's objectives. The Ministry of Social Development, represented by the Social Rehabilitation Directorate, announced its readiness to receive students with special needs in academic and vocational rehabilitation centers and homes during the new academic year. More on this report. The Ministry of Social Development has taken a series of important measures, including preparing academic and vocational rehabilitation programs, conducting the necessary assessments for students, developing individual training plans, providing school bags, organizing transportation services, and appointing companions for students on all buses. In addition to that, it was keen to train workers on how to deal with students with disabilities by organizing workshops and educational rehabilitation courses to provide services that suit their needs with the highest quality to start an academic year full of success, excellence, and distinction. To provide services that suit their needs with the highest quality to start an academic year full of success, excellence and distinction. The National Bureau for Revenue announced the application of domestic minimum top-up tax for multinational enterprises operating in Bahrain, whose annual global revenues exceed 750 million euro, in line with the requirements of the second pillar of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. More on this report. The Kingdom of Bahrain announced the introduction of a domestic minimum top-up tax for multinational enterprises, as outlined in Decree Law 11 of 2024. The new framework for multinational enterprises is fully aligned with the guidelines of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development and will be effective January 1, 2025, underscoring Bahrain's commitment to promoting global economic fairness and transparency. This strategic move builds on Bahrain's proactive engagement with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, dating back to 2018, when it joined the inclusive framework and endorsed the groundbreaking two-pillar reform. To date, over 140 jurisdictions have signed up for this international tax reform. As part of this two-pillar reform, the organization established a global minimum corporate tax to ensure large multinational enterprises pay a minimum tax of 15% on profits in each country where they operate. With the introduction of the domestic minimum top-up tax, Bahrain demonstrates its international commitment to global cooperation and its dedication to fostering a fair and level playing field in international taxation. The Ministry of Interior is keen to ensure the safe return of students to schools in an embodiment of community partnership through its field presence in the vicinity of Bahrain schools. The Ministry works according to plans aimed at raising awareness among drivers, parents and students. Bahrain Institute for Political Development organized a training course on modern etiquette, skills and social media for employees of the Shura and Representatives Councils and related entities as part of the Parliamentary Support Program. The course was taught by the Head of Media, Tourism and Arts and Associated Professor of Digital Media and Graphic Design at the University of Bahrain, Dr. Sama Al Hashimi. The course discussed a number of key topics including def definitional terms, strategies, guidelines and skills of etiquette, examples of non-adherence to etiquette and a number of motivational exercises. Dr. Al Hashimi emphasized the importance of digital etiquette which contributes significantly to enhancing the professional image, improving communication with the public, building trust with colleagues and consumers online, increasing productivity and improving work efficiency, and creating a positive and stimulating work environment.
The national football team continues its preparations to face Australia in the first round of the final qualifiers for the 2026 World Cup qualifiers. Bahrain national team coach Dragan Talajic seeks to reach the best physical and technical conditions for the team through daily training over two periods. The team is looking to a record of positive result in the opening of the third round of the Asian qualifiers for the World Cup in the match that will be held on the 5th of September in Australia before returning to face Japan at the Bahrain National Stadium on the 10th of this month.